So this is the first episode in the Google Analytics series and of course what makes sense is to go ahead and actually add Google Analytics to your website. So that's what this first video is all about. So let's get stuck in. In this video, we're going to look at how we actually set up Google Analytics. So this is our, our first step. We don't have an account. We're going to go into it right from scratch. First thing you need is a Google account. So if you've got a Gmail um, email address, then you've got a Google account. Uh, if you've got an Android phone, when you've set it up, you've got a Google account. So there's many, many different reasons why you might already have a Google account. If you don't have one, go ahead and set it up. It's free, it's easy, but you will need one before we actually are able to create our Google Analytics account. So the first thing we're gonna do is we go to analytics dot google dot com and we get to this landing page so we're going to go ahead and we are going to click on the button there start measuring so first thing that we need to do is actually create the account so what's the account name going to be now for most people you're just going to have one account and that will be it and that's fine um, if you are managing Google Analytics uh, for your organization and you have something you want to keep it completely separate, by all means, you could create another account. However, we can have one account and we can actually track and set up multiple websites under that one account. So keep that in mind as we go through these different videos and the training on the blogs, you're going to be able to see different ways you can do things. But again, keep it in mind, we can have multiple websites under one account. So I'm just going to call this my website. We can call it whatever we like. So now we're looking at different things in terms of uh, Google actually sharing the data. It's entirely up to you what you set up. You can see that all of these are recommended. Um, specifically, benchmarking is something that will come into play later on in this Google Analytics series. So go ahead, I would just leave them as a recommended for now, unless you're particularly offended by anything and want to turn it off, you can certainly do that. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Now it's asking, what do we want to measure? So in this series, we are only going to be looking at measuring a website, not looking at measuring an iOS or an Android app, if that's something that you have. Great, go for it. Um, you can use that or you can select the option for apps and website. Um, we are purely looking at measuring traffic to our website, so that's what I'm going to leave it on. So this is where I was talking earlier about the ability to have one account, but then have multiple websites. So when we set up a website, it is basically a property. So we might have two or three different websites that we manage and we want to track the uh, analytics, we want to track the traffic for those. So we can set those up as different properties. So Again, that's why the difference between your account and then what you're measuring within your account, we could have multiple websites. So I'm going to put Megan V. Walker. That name is purely for you. It is not the actual name of your website and uh, you can put whatever you wanted in here. This is where it's important to where we're going to go ahead and put MeganVWalker.com because that is the URL for my site. The industry category, so you need to look through the list and find something that um, is as close as possible to you and your site and what you do. So for me, I might put online communities um, or I might put, what else have we got in here? Uh, not quite computers and electronics. So that's probably the thing that um, is closest, I guess. And then what's the reporting time zone? So I'm going to go ahead and put United Kingdom and then let's go ahead and create. Now we're going to get to the exciting stuff to where we need to read through word for word all of the um, service agreements. So the terms and conditions. So we'll go ahead and accept that. Pretend we read it all. So once we've done that, a couple of other things. So in terms of getting emails on updates, what's new with Google Analytics, so I might say, yep, I want to get all of that. Uh, maybe I don't want the offers. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. So you can see immediately we've got a bit of information in terms of trying the Google Analytics mobile app. Uh, you can go ahead and download that. I use that quite a bit. However, as we're going through this uh, training series, 
then keep in mind there is a lot of the features that we're going to be going over are not necessarily available in the mobile app. So just keep that in mind. But it's good for a quick check on things if you want to. All right. So now that we've got our account set up, we've added the property. And again, remember, the property is our website that we're going to be tracking. Immediately, you're going to be taken to the area for accessing the tracking code. Now, what I'm going to do is just show you how you get to this, because if you ever forget and, and can't remember how to get the tracking ID, sometimes you might be fumbling around trying to find it. So when you first log into Google Analytics over on the left hand side where we've got our menu, we have the admin area. When we open up the admin area, it's going to have three sections. It's going to be the top level, which is the account. Then we have the property. And if we have multiple websites set up, we'd have multiple properties. Then as we go further down, we have views, which we will get to in different episodes or different sections of this series. But what we can see here is that within the property itself, we have the tracking info. And from there, I can click on the tracking code. So that will take us back to the area where we're actually going to get this code. And what we need to do is we need to put this tracking code onto our website. And when I say onto the website, I mean within the actual code of the website itself. So hopefully you've created your own website or know enough about it to where you can understand how to put this tracking code on yourself. If not, and somebody else is doing this for you, just ask them um, and they will should know exactly where to put it. It tells you we basically need to copy and paste the code as the first item into the head tag of every page you want to track. Now, years and years ago, it was a pain to where you'd have to then manually put that into every single page because you didn't have a universal or a global file that was the header that was pulled in for each page. Now, you typically are going to have sites such as if you're using WordPress or Joomla or um, whatever it might be, then you're going to be able to take this and paste it into one file and that's it. So we need to copy this. And we need to go to whatever that file is in our website and we need to paste it and save that file. So this is obviously not I'm not going to be showing my tracking code, but you've got to keep in mind that this is unique to you. So just don't be necessarily sharing that with anyone other than the person that's going to be putting it in there. You don't want somebody taking that and then putting it into their own site and you getting really random uh, inaccurate results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this into a site and then um, we'll come back so we can see what happens what, once we've actually added our tracking code. Okay, so once you've added that tracking code into your website, go ahead and open up a browser and go and actually visit the website. So in other words, open up a page and let's go ahead and go to it. So if I go to meganvwalker.com and let's go ahead and let's click on a page and then let's go back. Now we can see that we've got one active user right now. Uh, let's go to... So it's showing that we've got a user on the website. So that tells me that our tracking code is working. We're actually um, getting visitors coming to the website. So we're able to tell and see how many people are looking at the site at that moment in time. If you don't see the active users and you don't see at least one active user showing up, then we know that there's something wrong with the tracking code. Maybe the person that added it has put it in the um, in the wrong place. Maybe the person that added it um, put it in the wrong file. So we just need to check and make sure that the tracking code has been put in in the correct place on the right file. If not, um, then they need to go ahead and fix it because you should, again, like I said, immediately be able to see that there is an active user on the website at that moment in time. So that's how we go ahead and we set up our account. We actually go ahead and create the Google Analytics account. We add our website as a property. And then from there, we go ahead in the admin area and we can get to the tracking info, open up the tracking code, and we can go ahead, copy it, paste it, put it into our site, and then we'll start being able to track visitors. 
So throughout this entire Google Analytics series, we're going to be looking at all kinds of different functionality. So we're going to be taking it um, step, step by step, piece by piece. Um, so if you're looking at it thinking, well, what about this and what about that? We've got 30 days worth of this content to be able to get through and you should be able to find everything, hopefully, or almost everything you want to know about it. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell so that you don't miss any of the future videos for the Google Analytics series. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.